All right, I'm gonna show you guys. I'm I'm in Pro League. Me, I'm uh, Mary. Oh, Mary, really? Hey, Fabian. Hello. H how are you doing? I am just fine. Fortunately, I have to speak to you, but oh, one of that, that that happens every now and then. All right, so I'm going to try to translate everything in French because, like, you don't speak French. Je vais essayer de traduire tout en français. Tu parles un peu français, ok. Est-ce que, est que on peut faire l'interview en français, tu penses? Euh, baguette. <laughs> I just ask you if you if we if we can do the interview in French. Yes, I figured that out, but I don't speak much French except I can say that I speak French and I can say that I don't speak French. That's, That's good. basically it, and I can say which country I'm from. Et, euh, et donc, il peut juste dire qu'il parle français, qu'il ne parle pas français, et de quel pays il vient. So, what country are you coming from? De quel pays viens-tu? Well, I don't know how to say, like, I am from this country. I just know how to say my country. Like, je way. viens de... It's like I come from. Uh, oui, baguette. Je viens de... Say it again, say it. No, I'll, I Je viens de Suède. Trust me. I'll stick to a no. Ok. Euh, il va rester sur le no. Alors, so, I'm going to try to, yeah, I'm going to try to uh, make the, tran the, the translation and, and, the, and the translation and question at the same time. Je vais essayer de faire les questions et euh, de traduire euh, en même temps. Donc, bonjour Fabien, euh, Fabian, hello Fabian, could you please introduce yourself to the rare people that don't know you? Est-ce que tu peux t'introduire ou te présenter aux personnes qui ne te connaissent pas? Age, nationality, name, where do you live? Euh, L'âge, nationalité, le nom, d'où est-ce est que tu vis? I live in uh, a little shithole in the far north of Sweden. Je vis dans un trou qui s'appelle uh, qui est dans le nord de la Suède. Uh, 25 years old, I'm the best player in the world and the best player that's ever touched this game. Je suis uh, j'ai 25 ans, je suis le meilleur uh, joueur au monde uh, sur ce jeu et uh, je suis tout simplement le meilleur sur ce jeu. All right. All right, it's starting. Oh, okay, ça commence. Um, so basically, alors en gros Uh, your originality was so intense. Ton originalité est tellement énorme. Fabian, you decided to make your first name a nickname. Tu as décidé de faire en sorte que ton prénom devienne uh, ton pseudo. Well, you know, What, if say? I have my first name as my nickname. Si j'ai décidé d'avoir mon pr mon pseudo mon mon prénom uh, comme uh, pseudo. Everyone just knows that, like, everyone knows my name because that's how good I am. They, they don't, I don't need to have a nickname to hide be, behind when I fail. I just <laughs> have my real name, so everyone knows how good I am. J'ai pas besoin d'avoir un pseudo en fait. J'ai juste besoin d'avoir un prénom euh, pour que tout le monde puisse savoir. Euh, tout le monde sait déjà de, à quel point je suis bon. Oh my God, honestly, I, uh, like honesty is what describes you. Like being humble, modest, modest. La modestie c'est ce qui te caractérise. Humble, humble, right? Definitely, definitely. I'm the Clairement. most humble player there is. Clairement, je suis, le, je suis la personne la plus humble au monde. Um, can you come back a little bit Est-ce que tu peux revenir uh, un petit peu plus sur uh, qui tu... Uh, non. Can you come back a little bit about who you were, let's say, two years before Rainbow Six Est-ce que tu peux revenir un petit peu plus sur uh, qui tu étais uh, deux ans avant Rainbow Six Two years before Rainbow Six Siege, I worked in a sports store uh, whoa, 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 before whoa, whoa. I decided to study. Just, sorry, Fabian. Like, people are asking me, y'a des gens qui, qui veulent que je traduise ou pas? Dites-le moi tout de suite. Because people are saying, like, stop translating. Yeah, so. because it's really annoying when you speak at the same time as me. Mais je suis presque sûr qu'il y a plein de gens... Non, pas de traduction. Non, oui, non, non, oui. Le truc, c'est que si, si je traduis, euh, les gens qui ne comprennent pas peuvent comprendre. Mais si je ne traduis pas, ils ne peuvent pas comprendre. Alors que si je traduis et que vous vous comprenez, c'est juste un petit peu embêtant pour vous. Mais ça n'empêche rien à ce que vous compreniez. Donc s'il y a des gens qui demandent la traduction, je suis obligé de traduire les gars. C'est comme regarder la télé en Belgique. Je vois comment ils commencent à parler anglais, et puis tout à coup, il y a cette voix de random ass French. Ah oh, oui, baguette <rire> C'est comme, like, comme écouter la musique au. C'est comme écouter la musique. C'est comme écouter le. Et regarder la télé en, en Belgique. Ils font exactement la même chose. Uh, alors, so come back a little bit about uh, who you were, let's say two years before Rainbow Six. Est-ce que tu peux nous en dire un petit peu plus sur uh, deux ans avant Rainbow Six? Uh, I worked in a sports store. Uh, I actually kind of had like plans on studying, but I didn't have any money to do it. And I've never been the guy that wants to take loans to do something in my life, so I decided to start working instead. I've been working since I was 15, so I worked from 15 to 21 in sports store and I made my money so I could go away studying. And mm. I mean, when I studied, 
I start, started getting less and less money, and then eventually Siege came around and I started making money instead. Well, uh, donc il vient de dire qu'en gros, depuis, uh, il poste depuis uh, qu'il a 15 ans et uh, il travaillait dans un sports store, donc uh, l'équivalent chez nous sûrement d'un décathlon. Uh, wait, 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 wait. You, you were working in a sports store? Well, I wasn't fat all the time. <laughs> ouais, j'étais pas no. tout le temps gros. Uh, I injured my knee when I was 18, and that's when I started playing like really much computer games. I was playing sports in the second highest league in Sweden actually before that. Um, but I tore off both of my ligaments in my left knee, so I can't really run that much anymore. So, I mean, I was good at sports and running sh shoes was my like what I sold the most, and I really enjoyed that. Ok, donc en gros, il revenait juste sur le fait que, il, comme je me fous de sa gueule, puisque c'est toujours comme ça avec Fabien, ça fait très longtemps qu'on se connaît, et qu'on qu se tacle. Euh, justement, en parlant de tacle, il disait que euh, s'il a bossé dans un magasin de, euh, de euh, sport, euh, c'est qu'il y a eu un gros moment de sa vie où à un moment, il s'est fait mal aux genoux, ce qui a fait qu'il a arrêté le sport, mais il était très bon à ça. And when you say sport, which sport are you talking about I, I don't think you have it in... France or in Belgium or any French speaking country, it's called floorball. It's like I indoors ice hockey without any protection. So it, it's like, well, you run and you play with a plastic ball inside. Oh, I, I think it's called some, something like rink hockey in France. It could be, yeah, it could be. It's called ouais. floorball in English. Ok, donc en gros, il faisait euh, l'équivalent du, euh, du rink hockey, je crois, ça s'appelle en France, c'est-à-dire euh, le hockey sur glace mais sans la glace en fait, avec des patins à roulettes quoi. Ok, and now what is the story about you in Rainbow Six? When did it, when did you start it? Well, I actually I bought the game one day before Christmas because I was like I was gonna travel home that day like from the south where I was studying in Sweden to the north. So I bought the game and I was like, yeah, this looks fun. I played it for one hour and then I had to go through the flight. So I played the game for one hour. I came home like one or two weeks after after the New Year's Eve. And I just kept playing on my own. None of my friends wanted to play it. My friends were really into Counter-Strike. We played lots of Counter-Strike before it. So it was just me playing on my own. And eventually I found like a group of friends that I used to play Day C with back in the day, like way back, like two or three years before that. And they were playing Siege as well. So I started playing with them and we signed up for a Go4. And all of a sudden, well, we managed to get pretty far in the Go4. And basically at that point, I was a much better fragger than I am today which meant I was running Ash and Jaeger, and I was just killing everything. I so, remember. yeah, basically at that point, I just killed everything there was to kill. Just rushed everything. And eventually I got to the top by joining different teams, and then the team that I played for with, in Pro League with Phoenix, they dis decided to disband. We kicked one player, two players wanted to leave after that, which meant we didn't have enough trade spots anymore. So we disbanded, and I joined Penta. Well, that was, a, that was a good summary. Bon, alors, pour, pour refaire dans les grandes lignes, en gros, je lui demandais juste un petit peu, euh, euh, eh bien, euh, c'est ce quoi son histoire autour de Rainbow Six. Et en gros, bah, il, il, a, il a eu le, le jeu en 2015, donc en décembre 2015 pour, pour Noël. Euh, C'était un gros joueur de CSGO par le passé. Pendant très longtemps, euh, il a été euh, Ashman, No Brain, donc euh, beaucoup euh, très très fragueur. Il parlait de son expérience et sa première équipe qui a été avec Phoenix, et puis il s'est rendu compte que ça marchait euh, plutôt bien, euh, jusqu'au jour où ils ont décidé de, de disband. Et ensuite, en gros, grosso modo, et on reviendra d'ailleurs sur un moment euh, dont il n'a pas parlé, euh, il, joint, il décide de rejoindre Panta. Um, we were talking about the uh, about French. On parlait un petit peu de, du français. Your girlfriend speaks French. What can you say in the most beautiful language on earth, except the, from what you say? The nothing. Nothing. Literally nothing. I I don't know how to speak any of it. It makes no sense to me. The sounds make no sense. Like how you pronounce things makes no sense. It just like the way that like just like the phonetics of how you put the air through your mouth just illogical. You guys. Basically, you speak like monkeys. <laughs> do you know that? Do, do you know that one of the? Uh, en gros, il, il, en, pour résumer, il dit qu'on parle comme des singes. Uh, clairement, la, la façon dont on prononce les, les choses, etc., etc. So, do you know that one of the reason I really wanted to invite you was for French people to love the person, to love, to love the person that they don't know, the person behind the mask, the real Fabian. But, but. Who's the real Fabian? Is it a true hassle or is it just, or is it just a, you know, uh, is it just a mask? 
Well, and I think there's two parts to that because I, I honestly believe, like when I go up on stage and I tell everyone that we're the best team in the world, I honestly believe we're the best team in the world. I don't believe that anyone is close to us. But then, of course, you put on kind of a mask to be kind of aggressive and try to take away the pressure from your teammates by taking all the negative traits and the, all the hate that we get from the outside. I put it on myself and then I don't really care about people not liking me. I don't like most people anyway, so it's fine if they don't like me back. Ok, je lui demandais en grosso modo si c'était un masque, le fait que cette apparence de passer pour le plus gros des trous du cul, si je puis dire, même si, euh, voilà, si c'était juste un masque. Oui et non, en fait, dans le sens où c'est aussi une de ses personnalités de ne pas en avoir grand chose à foutre des autres, et il considère vraiment que son équipe, euh, personne ne peut arriver à la cheville de son équipe à l'heure actuelle, donc euh, si ça doit le faire passer pour un trou du cul, bah, c'est pas un problème. <coughs> ok. Um, well, uh, your girlfriend speaks French. And you often say that you are trying to learn our language. Donc tu nous as déjà dit que tu essayais pourtant d'étudier de, 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 notre langage, even if it's like a monkey language. Um, the question is now, is she trying to learn Swedish? I mean, that could be very useful to know the meanings of the IKEA's furniture will, you'll buy. Well, it was like we've been looking to moving in together. And because of that, it's like either one of us has learned other language, right? And we don't really know where to go yet and she's still studying a lot and i have a lot of spare time during the days and since we have been taking a break from siege i've had a lot of spare time from that so i've been learning it just via an app and then whenever we decide which country we're going to live in i mean the other person is going to have to learn the other language right but then also it's it would it would be nice like for example if i move to belgium and i learn french i kind of feel like she should learn swedish just to like we both put in the same effort Ok, donc en gros, ça dépendra surtout le fait que euh, lui et sa copine euh, qui parlent français, puisqu'elle est belge, mais de la partie francophone, euh, qui est-ce qui apprendra le langage de l'autre, si je puis dire Ça dépendra beaucoup de l'endroit où ils vont décider de, de s'installer. So you still don't know where you are going to live with her like, no, Are you going to live really in Belgium We haven't decided. We don't know. It's, uh, it's up to the future. It's kind of like where she finds the job that she wants to do. And if she finds that job in Sweden, well, then she has to decide to move to Sweden or not. So it's, it's kind of like she needs to find a job she wants to do. All right. And Belgium isn't known, especially not like the Valon part isn't really known to have the best job opportunities. Like what? The Belgium French part? Yeah, the Belgium French part isn't known to have the most work opportunities ouais. for her. Ok, d'accord. Donc il parlait du fait que euh, ça va être vachement dépendant du fait qu'elle puisse travailler euh, euh, et trouver un boulot euh, dans ce qui lui plaît et où euh, ça lui plaît, euh, soit en Suède, soit euh, en Belgium. Et pour lui, la partie francophone de la Belgique n'offre pas les meilleurs job opportunities, donc les meilleures opportunités de, de travail. Um, alors, <coughs> Rainbow Six Year One or Rainbow Six Now, and why? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I like back in Year One. Uh, I think it was a simpler game, and I don't think that there was as many operators that made you a good player that like there are today. There are a lot of operators these days that make you a good player because the operator is really strong instead of having the player make the operator good, which you had back then. So I, I think it has a lot to do with different kind of mindsets on how to play the game. But if you look at like current balance and like how the game flows, then definitely today. I mean, year one was a shit show of hackers and all that stuff. Okay. Hit registration was worse than it's ever been back then. Donc il n'est pas vraiment, euh, sur, la, sur la question de savoir si c'est plutôt Rainbow Six Year One ou Rainbow Six maintenant, il n'est pas vraiment tranché dans le sens où il euh, y a le côté, euh, effectivement, euh, les opérateurs, euh, le jeu en lui-même était plus sympathique parce qu'il y avait moins d'opérateurs qui étaient, euh, bah, avec tous les shit shows qu'on a eu avec, euh, avec Lyon, euh, par exemple, euh, euh, voilà, et d'autres éléments comme ça. Donc c'était plus simple et c'était plus pur, peut-être. Mais le problème, c'est que c'était qu'avant, il y avait beaucoup de problèmes avec le jeu, euh, des, des rios, comme on en parlait, euh, des cheaters, etc., donc, euh, bon, c'est un, euh, un petit peu 50-50, si je dois résumer un petit peu sa, sa pensée. Euh, why Rainbow Six Why Rainbow Six after CSGO why, why this game Are you used to... Did you know, like, uh, Tom Clancy Did you read Tom Clancy back in the days Or is it just, like, another FPS and you're like, yeah, why not I got tricked. I got tricked by the E3 trailer. <laughs> the, the famous one. <laughs> yeah, they, they tricked me really hard. Yeah, but it was not supposed to be a competitive game, uh, like when you watched like the E3, K, uh, E3 trailer. It was more like a, a SWAT 4, like the, the SWAT 4 that we never had. I mean, it looked way better, that's for sure. Right. <laughs> I got bamboozled. 
Donc, en gros, <rire> pourquoi Rainbow Six Parce que, parce que il, il dit qu'il a été euh, trompé entre guillemets par le, par le, euh, par le trailer de Leecube, euh, qui était euh, donc qui, qui vous vous en souvenez, eh bien montrait une version du jeu et qui a été quand même bien downgrade pour s'adapter à toutes les plateformes, etc. Mais qui en a fait quelque part un jeu beaucoup plus compétitif que la, la version qu'on avait à Leecube, euh, je trouve, moi personnellement. Um, uh, what are your best esport moments in Rainbow Six? Well, I've won quite a lot of tournaments, you know, I've won yeah, I know. Invitationals 2018, Invitationals 2019, Paris Major was kind of nice, I had like three Pro League wins at that, yeah, but uh, I'd still say that the practice I had with my team one this one time, we played Oregon three times in a row against this French team, and we won 5-0, 5-0, and 5-0, I think that's the proudest moment of my life. I'm not gonna translate that. <rire> euh, je lui ai demandé quel était son meilleur esport moment. Il était en train de revenir sur tous les, tous les trucs qu'il avait gagnés par le passé. Et là, forcément, il a trollé sur le fait qu'un soir, il a joué contre notre équipe. Ça a été pour moi euh, l'un des, euh, des tournants. Ça vous permet un petit peu d'en savoir un petit peu plus. Fabien a été l'un des tournants pour moi de, de, de mettre un terme à ma carrière. Parce qu'on l'a joué trois fois d'affilée sur Oregon. Et euh, j'ai pris 5-0. Et j'ai dit, désolé, on ne perd pas 5-0 contre ces mecs-là. Euh, on rejoue et on a reperdu 5-0. Et derrière, euh, Renshiro est là, il pourra acquiescer, il pourra vous dire euh, un Renshi. Euh, et derrière, on a rejoué contre lui et on a reperdu 5-0. 15-0, on a pris euh, dans la gueule d'affilée. Et, euh, et là, je me suis dit, le jeu a évolué d'une façon euh, que je ne maîtrise plus. Autant avant, vraiment, je voyais la matrice, je me disais, mais c'est impossible qu'on ne gagne pas. Euh, quand, on est allé, euh, euh, quand on est allé avec Yungtis à la saison 2, on, on, désolé, mais on se moquait quasiment des équipes qui étaient en face de nous en se disant, on va les défoncer, vraiment. Euh, mais là, c'était une tournure. Euh, assez euh, beaucoup plus skill based euh, et ça n'avait rien à voir avec ce qu'on avait toujours vu par le passé ils avaient complètement métamorphosé la méta ok um... and just to add on to that I remember their in-game leading rage quitter after that, that <laughs> yeah I, I even say like the truth that it was one of the reasons you made me quit the game to be honest and that felt so good <laughs> fuck you <laughs> uh, Um, at the end of 2016, uh, let's talk about uh, leaving the game. At the end of uh, 2016, you publicly announced that you were retiring from the competition. Almost everyone believed you wouldn't come back. Well, not really everyone. Do you remember who didn't believe you? Oh yeah, you didn't believe me, but it wasn't really planned on coming back either. It was because of my friends actually, like my real life friends bought the game and started playing it. And that's why I came back. I started playing with my real life Ooh. friends. Uh, well, this, it's the guys that I still play with, uh, uh, Mons and Alexander, which are like two of my closest friends in in real life. We don't we don't live in the same city anymore because they're out studying. One in Stockholm, and nine, one guy is like three hours further south from me. So it's like we hang out by playing games, and I started playing with them. So eventually, you know, it's difficult for a competitive player to stay away from competition. Yeah. But yet you publicly announced like oh, big yeah, title that you were retiring. Like how could you how could you not happened. see how could you not see in the future? Like how could you like just not just let a little door open? Why did well, you at that point there wasn't any money in the game, right? Like you literally if you didn't win every single pro league season, you couldn't live out of it. True. But when when I came back, the prize pools had started to increase quite a lot. And they started becoming bigger and bigger. Because I came back just after Invitationals, the first one. And that's when they announced that the first prize for winning Pro League would be 75k. And that's quite a lot of money compared to the, what, 25k you would win otherwise. So it, it was quite a lot more money. And since I started failing my school, my university studies really hard, it's difficult to focus on a test that you have on a Friday if you have Pro League the Thursday night. Like, you don't prepare at all for the test because, well, I have a pro league game, I need to prepare for the pro league game. So I started failing everything in school, and that's why I stopped playing the game. But then I came back because of my friends, and it's all their fault. <laughs> euh, donc, en gros, je lui demandais, euh, en fin 2016, il a annoncé euh, en grande ponte euh, qu'il euh, arrêtait et qu'il euh, prenait sa retraite de Rainbow Six. Et sur Reddit, la première personne à lui avoir dit euh, « Non, tu nous mens et tu reviendras », alors que tout le monde lui disait « bah Bon vent, euh, c'était moi », et je lui avais dit euh, euh, « J'y crois pas un seul instant 
Et il était vraiment très sérieux. Il disait qu'en fait, c'était parce qu'à l'école, ça ne se passait pas du tout bien et qu'il avait euh, quasiment tout fait là, à l'école et que c'était difficile de, euh, de voir le futur euh, dans Rainbow Six tant euh, il fallait quasiment tout défoncer et tout gagner pour espérer à peu près vivre de Rainbow Six. Et après, il est revenu sur le jeu grâce à des amis IRL. Et, euh, et derrière, bah forcément, avec les annonces, euh, tu ne peux pas euh, euh, enlever le, le côté compétitif d'une personne compétitive. Donc, il s'est dit, euh, pourquoi pas. Um, <coughs> what is the best, G2 or Penta Well, that depends on which, which terms you're talking about. Organization. We're talking about, we're talking about organization. Well, I've signed some contracts, which means I'm not allowed <laughs> to talk too much about organizations, so we can skip that question. All right. Joker. That's the first one. You're only allowed well, to have two Jokers. I'm, I'm allowed to speak about my current organization. I'm very happy about it, and they are very professional, but I'm not going to comment on my previous one. All right, so you can comment anything about your current organization, like, for example, what is your salary, Fabian? Oh, I'm not going to tell you that. I make <laughs> so more money than you can dream of. <laughs> Donc, j'ai demandé quel était son salaire, puisqu'il était euh, visiblement euh, enclin à parler de G2. Il m'a dit euh, non, et je fais plus d'argent que tu ne pourras jamais en rêver. <laughs> OK. Um, alors, what was the match you would remember all your life? Really, not the one on Oregon. It was a practice. It's not a match. It doesn't count. I actually don't know. There isn't one that just stands out to me that much. Uh, it, it, it's, I, if, if anything, it would be the Invitational 2018 because the the feeling from coming back 0-2 was insane. But you can't really comp like Paris Major. Sure, we won like more money and we won more money in Invitational 2019. But those games weren't close. Like 3-0, 3-0. It just, it wasn't the same thing. So Invitational 2018, if anything. Ok, donc le, le de, son meilleur match, ça, ça reste quand même le, le 2018, le Six Invitational, le fait de comeback contre IG, mener 2-0 et de revenir et de gagner le BO5 3-2. Voilà, parce que les autres ont été des moments mémorables aussi. En plus, il a fait plus d'argent, mais bon, c'était quand même des 3-0. Euh, Just uh, who inspires you every day, except me, obviously, for obvious reason. Don't well, comment that, please. <laughs> you don't I have to say, say that anything. you'd inspire me ever, but <laughs> Come on, sure. who inspires uh, you every day? Is there anyone that inspires you except I don't think that there's a yourself. person who inspires me. I think it's more that I, I, I want to be the best at what I do, and therefore I will try to reach for it over and over and over, no matter how much I fail. Uh, so I wouldn't say that there's a person that inspires me to do anything different. I put the pressure on myself to be the best, which means that. But there I is play no like, myself. there is no like sport player that like for you or like like you know they're like a representation of what you what you'd like to achieve or at least back in the day no. when you didn't ac achieve almost anything on the game except winning two community cup. I mean, I still had more achievements than you back then, so two community cups. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of more than your one, no, but uh, not really, not in that regard, like, oh, I look up to this just one particular person. Like, obviously you have those guys that you, like, look to and you, like, enjoy how they play games. Like, a lot of Counter-Strike players in Sweden are really big, right? So, obviously there are Counter-Strike players that were like, oh yeah, they played really cool Counter-Strike and they, like, I want to do what they do. But it wasn't that I looked up to them and were like, oh, I want to be like this guy. Never like that. All right. Um... Except you, me, and Mary. Who is the best player in the world? Um, Counter Cat is the best player in the world after me. Why? Why? What does it make? Why? I've never seen a player that hits the shot that he does. Like, it's just, well, one of them did and he got banned. But uh, other than that, I've never seen anyone that does that. So it's like it's like perfect aim always all the time. For some reason, he just hits the unbelievable shots. It just it doesn't make any sense sometimes when we practice. He just hits it, and then he goes and do that in pro league as well. Mm. Would you still make nightmare if uh, Youngtis was uh, was uh, was coming back in pro league? No. No. Why Are would you I have sure of that? From a team like that. 100%. <laughs> that team is way too structured. Way too structured. That wouldn't work today. Well, all right. We'll see. We'll see. 
way too structured. So I'm gonna jump to another question. What do you think about Empire? Don't you think it's a little bit uh, too structured to be winning today? Because I can guarantee you that there are some strategy that they're using that even if they're in Russian and not in French, I still see where I do think where they're coming from. Uh, they play very, very different from what all of course, Jones did. Of course, but, they... um... But still, it's I, like almost I, attacking they, the same place at the same time with the same person. But they did it like so, you know, in in a way that effectively, exactly. What they have that nobody else have. They they have the best droning in the game currently. Nobody's close to them. On, on best the droning, droning in the game, and they have joystick in defense, right? Yeah, All right. they're they're a good team, but I still think we're better. All right. Um, could you tell us uh, more about? Um, oh wait. What is your like more simple question? Your favorite operator and why? I don't have favorite operators. Like I don't really look at the operators in in that regard. Um, I like what you can do with a combination of operators or how you use them in team play situations. But I don't have that one favorite operator. If if I could only play one operator for the rest of my life in both attack and defense, like one that I could only play, most likely. Right now, I'd say that I would play Jackal because I like I enjoy his guns, both yeah. both his PDW and his uh, C7E. And in defense, I actually have no clue, none whatsoever. Capcan is fine. Not even Legion. It, 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 Legion is a, a bit too overpowered. I, it, it's just a bit too strong. All right. Donc je lui demandais quel était son meilleur opérateur et pourquoi. Euh, là, il venait juste de terminer en disant que Lésion est pour lui euh, trop trop strong. Euh, je pensais que ça allait être celle la réponse sur le fait que ce soit son opérateur favori, mais plutôt Jackal en fait euh, en attaque parce que déjà son PDW et son CW7, euh, son arme principale, ses deux armes principales pour le coup euh, sont absolument monstrueuses et que il est euh, il est très efficace et c'est un très très bon opérateur. Um, all right. Um, G2 surprisingly didn't, didn't qualify for uh, the last uh, Pro League final. So don't, G2 ne s'est pas uh, qualifié pour les uh, finales de Pro League. Is it the end of an era? Or the beginning of the fall? Or just a normal shit happens? No, that's It's an interview. Question. It doesn't mean uh, that, I, that, that I mean it. It doesn't mean that I, uh, no, that I, I think I, about I, it. I, I know what you mean. Uh, whoever says that it's an end of an era, I think that's a big meme. Uh, we won invitationals, and that's all that matters. The prize pool for Pro League when invitationals began, you had to win Pro League 11 times in a row to even get to the same amount of pro prize pool money that you would get from winning invitationals. First half of the Pro League season, we threw it on pretty much in, in the sense of We picked Oregon as many times as we could, just so we could hide as much as we could from other maps. We banned Oregon every single match in Invitationals, and we banned it as the first ban. So it was basically, we forced Oregon as many times as we could. We didn't even practice Oregon, to be honest. Like, we didn't like the map. It's way too linear. Everyone does the same. There isn't any difference in it. So on purpose, we kind of hid stuff. And then second half, we just had some poor individual performances that led to us not being able to qualify and that happens everyone is going to have some some rough times where they played poorly so no changes uh in g2 uh that's not something we've decided yet i don't think there's going to happen about that much All right. Donc je lui ai demandé, euh, est-ce que, est que le, le fait que G2 ne soit, soit pas qualifié, c'était un petit peu, pour reprendre une expression que j'avais trouvée aussi un petit, peu, euh, un petit peu abusive, mais bon, j'utilise l'expression « la fin d'une ère euh, », tout simplement, ou est-ce que c'est plutôt un « shit happens », donc euh, ça arrive, euh, voilà, et donc il est plutôt sur la côté euh, « shit happens », ça peut arriver, il expliquait pourquoi, etc. Euh, chose que je vais faire, à mon avis, sur YouTube, on remettra la retransmission et on mettra les traductions en français et en anglais, ok Comme ça, ce sera beaucoup plus simple pour euh, tout le monde, pour l'exclamation YT, pour ceux qui ne connaissent pas. <coughs> Um, I told about that. What do you think about Empire winning the Pro League? And more generally, what do you think about Empire? I think they're a very strong team. They they have a playstyle that counters a lot of people, and if you don't know how to counter them, you're done for. Um, they have a very strong mentality, which a lot of teams seem to lack. Look at EG in the final. I mean, I've never seen a team choke that hard. I, I don't know, maybe they had a potato down their throat or something, but that was fucking insane, the amount of choke they did. Um, I think Empire is a good team, but there isn't much more to that. There are good teams that comes up and down all the time. The season before this, it was Team Secret. Uh, now it's Empire. Uh, it can be anything, really. It doesn't really matter to me. I think we're still the best. Doesn't, I don't really care about the second place. 
Ok, donc je lui demandais pour euh, Empire, etc. Mais il considérait plus que même si c'est une très bonne team, il le dit, euh, que eh bien c'est plutôt euh, les équipes d'en face qui ont choke, euh, qui ont choke comme des malades. Et que euh, pour lui, il se considère toujours et il considère toujours son équipe comme étant la meilleure au monde. Et que euh, voilà, c'était juste un moment, en gros, à mon avis. Et que euh, dans le futur, euh, ce ne sera pas forcément euh, euh, reproduit. Euh, euh, you and I made the same mistake. We announced before the final that the stream was going to make it. What do you think about poor our poor predictions? And what do you think about the stream overall? I don't understand. Those guys are fucking better at choking than EGR. Holy oh. shit. Oh, so you think it's about uh, choking? Yeah, I think it's a massive thing about choking. They don't play the same even slightly in practice and in Pro League as they did during LAN. Not during invitationals and not during the pro league land like it doesn't matter they, they don't they aren't playing their own game if you were their coach what would you tell them well i'm happy i'm not carpel because he's way fatter than i am so <laughs> I, i'm, I'm happy about not being <laughs> their coach but uh <laughs> you go ahead but i it, it's difficult i think it has to do a lot with mentality that you can't change it's just some people have the problem when they get the pressure on them Uh, they don't know what to do, and it doesn't matter what the coach tells them. I think it has to do with experience. All right. So, do you think that in the end they don't have to cho to change anything, but in the end it's it's gonna happen? Like they are gonna be uh, eventually they're gonna make it. Yeah. All right. Um, well, we just saw that you're known to be very salty, but about the game, about the game itself. Are oh, you the game some is shit? Well, another another proof. Are you some kind of masochist to be still playing a game you're struggling with? Well, uh, I wouldn't say that I'm struggling with the game. The game is the super fun to play when you're in playing with your team and you're playing against another team that actually knows what they're doing. The game is fucking shit when you play it in ranked. Uh, and it kind of like it it just doesn't resemble any sort of competitiveness whatsoever in ranked. It's you you solo queue, you play versus a five stack. You five stack, you play versus solo queues. Like all of these things, and then all the operators are allowed. Obviously, they're changing that now. We have 14 maps. Doesn't matter. Like half of the maps are fucking absolute garbage. They're worse at this game than the current French teams. But do you think that if Fabian was a developer of the game, there would be enough money getting into the into the company? Because I got your player point, I got your pro point, but do you have like the other vision, the vision that most of the time casual players, the one who like DLC, the one who maybe who might liked Lion, these guys, they are the guys that put money into the game. I mean, I think that if you're a person who likes Lion, you can be hit in the head with a hammer over 10 times and that wouldn't change much. So. Uh, those players shouldn't even have a say in the regard. They literally don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Because, yes, you can have a game that works for both casual and professional play, but you always need to balance the game after the highest competitive level. Because otherwise, you're just fucking over everyone. The game shouldn't have operators that make you into a good player. During Atlantic City LAN, I was playing Lion as my main operator. My monitor broke in the practice area. And I got two assists by having no monitor because my teammates told me press four now and I pressed four and they had to stand still. That kind of shit shouldn't be in a game. That that doesn't show any sort of skill on my part, on my op opponent's part, or my teammates part. It's just that the gadget is too good. And yeah. there's so many operators right now that have mm. that. But we were not talking about Lion. Lion was just an example. What would yeah. all right, let's say Like Fabian is hired by, uh, it's over with G2. Fabian is hired by uh, by uh, Ubisoft uh, Canada, Montreal. You're the chief. You're the you're the one who decide. All right. You're the you're the master of Rainbow Six. You can decide whatever you want about the game. What would be the three things that you would change instantly? Quelles seraient les trois choses que tu devais changer si demain tu devais être le le patron de Rainbow Six chez Ubisoft? So. What I would like to change first of all is the rank system. Basically make it into a copy of current Pro League. Uh, maybe we could have less rounds and I could be accepted 
with that, like only like best. So like if you win five rounds, you win the game instead of having to win seven. Uh, just so it takes less time. I would change that first of all. I would change so that operators that are deemed too strong would get banned automatically. So that like, for example, lion shouldn't be a thing. As I said, like there are some operators that wouldn't even be in the game. I would remove them straight off the bat because it doesn't belong in the game. Uh, and it's difficult. I would fix a lot with the hit registration because playing on LAN and playing online, it's basically like playing two different games. Definitely. Yeah. All right. But that doesn't mean that it's going to be bringing money. And you know that because if you're the master of, if you're working at Ubisoft, the only, the first thing that your boss will tell you is like, Hey, Fabian, we need to bring money with this game. And like the, the three things that you just told me are just going to increase the health of the game which might make it better but it's not going to bring any yes money. but you're also going to have on the side you're going to have the people that make the money which is the skin creators that's like the reason that siege makes money is because they sell shit tons of skins that's how they make all the money if you look at the profits that rainbow six siege are making they could literally even go minus for a few years and that wouldn't even like they would still have made money on the game so the money that they are making from this is absurd amounts and they're not funding in very much back into it. Well, that's something I can't comment because it seems that you have more that data that uh, that I have. Oh, it's been posted. I, I don't remember which. It was like one of the gaming newspapers where they check out how much money they make from a game. All right. So about the saltiness, uh, could you tell us what it costed you? And if you had to do it again, would you or would you change a few things? Like, um, I do remember that because you were salty in an interview, you've been banned for from being interviewed uh, at the end or at the end of the matches in Pro League. Is it true? Oh, yeah, that is true. I got media banned for like four months. And I actually had to make rules because I asked every other player to like, don't do interviews because they're actually silenced in the opinion of pro players because they disagree with them. And that's what they were doing. I said that best of ones were shit and they shouldn't be in pro league. And I got banned for saying that best of ones are shit. And then every other pro player pretty much agreed with me. So I told them, well, don't do interviews until I'm unbanned then. And then people stopped making interviews. There was like, there was only one team that did it and it was team secret. And that was because at that point they didn't have an organization and they were scared that they wouldn't get one if they didn't do interviews. So they were the only team that pretty much were doing interviews. And then they put into the rule book that you get a $5,000 fine if you don't do an interview. And then everyone started doing interviews again. Okay. Well, do you think that the, you know, the link, the communication between Ubisoft and the pro players has improved? It's improved, but it's still pretty much non-existent. Like it's this, the, the, the sound that we tell them in their ears goes in one ear and then it goes out the other ear after half a second. Most of the time it is that way. They've gotten better at listening, but I mean, I'm still, I'm still scared that they don't really care. Okay. Well, um, um, uh, don't you think it's, don't you think even if it's hard as a, as a public figure, because you are a public figure, uh, you shouldn't be that publicly salty against a game that brought you so much. Why, why shouldn't I? what is the reason i shouldn't be i i don't owe anyone anything I, I don't have to be a different person just because i'm successful i'm just gonna be the exact same person i was before i play this game as i am right now and why would i change something that made me get as far as i did because of use because of uh, young people around you oh, i, you I that... have never signed any contract or i have never agreed to be any sort of role model people can look up to what i do i would never said that they should look up to the person that i am I have no contract that says that I have to behave in a certain way. I'll behave that the way that I want to be, the person I want to be, I'm going to be. They, they, nobody has the right to tell me what I should do or what I shouldn't do. That's all right. I get it. I kind of like it. What do you think about the French pro scene? And overall, scene? The, fr <laughs> the French pro scene. I have literally no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> and overall, the French Rainbow Six community. Honestly, don't you think we are the best? No. Uh, I think that every big country has this... Um, most of the big countries in any game, it doesn't matter which game, 
they get a really poor reputation because there's a lot of those players that are extremely toxic. And if you look at Siege, France is the biggest region in Europe, which means that a lot of people dislike the French community because of them being very toxic. And they tend to only speak their own language, which is kind of rough when you try to speak with them and they you, you tell them some a call in English and then they go, Putain! and then you, they scream at you. And then it's, it's rough, but I don't really have an opinion on it. I don't really give a shit. Nobody likes me. I don't like anyone anyways. So for me, it doesn't matter. But that's not true. Just that's, 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 I have to stop you here. Like you think that no one's lo love you. And you think that they don't like you, but you you're also smart enough to know that the person that you're you know that you're pretending to be, or maybe you really are. Like people don't believe in that. People just see like a a, a little tiny teddy bear who is hungry almost all, always of the time. We just want to cuddle you. That's all. That's all we want. Do you know that? Well, if they look at me like a teddy bear, first of all, they pr should probably stop going on the medication they're going on because <laughs> I am a human. Uh, and I just think that there's people are tired of the way that people are currently, where you have to have the same opinions as everyone else and be happy and you have to be nice to everyone and you just need to treat everyone like super perfect human being. I just, I really don't give a shit. I do what I want. I say what I feel like, I say what I think. And I'm not gonna be afraid of someone telling me I can't do something. And don't you are aren't you afraid it's gonna cost you things in life? Oh, well, it might cost me things, but if 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 it's something that people would be offended by me making a joke or me saying something, then it's probably not the person I would like to do anything with, anyways. All right. So special question, like, and uh, there is a very strong link between this you and the French community, and it's due to a person. A few weeks back, for our first, let's call it the summoning, la convocation, for the first convocation, we invited someone quite special here, Shaco. Oh, Any words nice. on the topic or for him? Well, I wish him all the luck he can get uh, in his current like trials to become pro again. It, it's up to him. Like I, I don't really give a shit. I really didn't give a shit to begin with. Uh, it wasn't really me pushing anything, but it's... I think that if you're caught with cheating by ESL, you are known as a hacker, no matter, like... I don't think that ESL would go through the hassle of banning someone that they don't have enough proof on. I, I just think it's that way. If you get banned for cheating, you're a cheater. And that's it. End of discussion. But they unbanned it. They, they didn't unban him. him. He was, was banned for a year and a half, and then he went through the... What was he called? The the cheater, um, a rehab program. Cheater rehabilitation program. Yeah. So they didn't unban him. He you went through the rehabilitation that you can do, and then he got his sentence shortened. He's still caught for cheating, which means he did cheat. Now he might not, and I don't really care. I don't give a shit about his career. I just think that if you've been banned for it, you've been banned for it for a reason. It doesn't come from nothing. Come on, you, it can come from nothing. It can no. just be human. No. Uh, you, oh, come on, you, you, you. How can you say at the same time that ESL makes so many problems? Like they had, they had so I many problems because ESL it's all, it, it's all. Well, you don't say okay. it. You don't say it, but you also say that you know, like for on the first, uh, like the first year of the pro league, the two first year of the pro league, for some reason it was a shit show. Even like two weeks ago, you were like talking about and making a tweet longer about uh, about an organization, Alliance Esports. So I mean, yeah, it's it's just that's human. That's it's, completely different. Yeah, but like no. it's it's just you. It's still it's human who can make mistakes. Don't you well, think? I'm, I'm, not saying, mistakes, I'm not saying. I'm not saying any cheat in a game and lie about not doing. I'm not saying anything about Shaco. I still don't know, and this is exactly what I told I you two weeks ago. I trust that sheet system good enough. You think so? Yes. So for you, it's like 100% a cheater. I think that if you've been caught and banned for cheating, then you're a cheater. Until it can be proven differently. And since it can't be proven that he hasn't done it, well, there you have your answer. I got it. Um, so... Another question, because like you, you, you were becoming salty about me and the and the five, three times you bet me on Oregon. So let me ask you a question: What do you plan to do after being a professional? 
I mean, well, you. I don't. What, I don't want to be mean, a you understand, streamer. You, I mean, you understand what that with your face, you can't really be a caster or or a streamer, right? I don't really have to be anything. Uh, I don't really have that much plans. Most likely, I'll go back to school and finish what I was studying, and then working with that. But I don't really have any plans that far. What What were you doing at school? I was studying to be a teacher in history and politics. And what is your dad? You you talked about your dad. What is your dad doing? He's uh insurance like he gets insurances for big companies. He's like the middle hand between the insurance company and the big company. All right. Well, I think I got all my uh, questions and I got all my answers. Thank you so much, Fabian, for uh, for coming here on the campus, even if you stayed uh, where you are. Uh, or for being here, a representation. We have the representation of uh, you here on the I campus. made 2,000 euros for 40 minutes interview. That's pretty nice. Yeah, go fuck yourself on this. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> oh, you're not going to pay me now? We agreed on 2,000 euros. Yeah, now. sure. Say, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then All you, right, I and see then how we, it is. And see, then you woke this up. This is what I'm telling you. And then French you woke community, up. man. <laughs> and French then community. We... They just <laughs> scam you, and then they cheat you. And then, yeah, you see? This yeah. is just... Yeah. Yeah, and then you woke up. It's it's called wet dreams, man. It's called wet yeah, dreams. Yeah, whatever. But I'm gonna, French I'm gonna, community. I'm gonna, I see how you guys are. I'm gonna buy you a hamburger. We're a diet version of a hamburger when we oh, yeah. see in the yeah, rally. Oh yeah, go for that. Go for that. All right. All I'm not because gonna talk we're to you because you tricked me on two thousand euros. <laughs> you agreed with it, and then you said no. <laughs> go fuck yourself. <laughs> well, it's the end. The, thanks for coming on our summoning interview. What should we wish for you in the future? I don't really give a shit about you guys' opinion. Well, I was going to tell you, you have the last word, but I think you just said it. I used it. You just used it. Thank you, Fabian. Fuck off. <laughs>